What's going on? Bottom line viewers, it's Mitch here, here to break down the New England Patriots 2018 draft. And the New England Patriots were a team that was very intriguing heading into this draft. They had two firsts, they had two seconds, and what do they do? But of course, Bill Belichick picks some players in the first round, two guys from Georgia, and then he trades out of the second round a majority of the time to get picks for next year. So the Patriots are now loaded up next year with a first round pick, multiple seconds, I believe it's three, and then they have two third round picks, or three third round picks, and they have a lot of incoming picks because of who they lost in free agency this year. So the Patriots, they get a a lot of players in this year's draft, and it looks like they'll get a lot of players in next year's draft. But I wouldn't be surprised, adding on to this draft grade, um, if the Patriots do indeed trade some of those picks next year to get some players for this year's season from other teams. Maybe a linebacker, maybe an edge rusher, maybe a depth player on defense. So look out for that if you're a Patriots fan. The Patriots might use those picks next year to make some deadline deals or some deals of around late August, early September to add to their roster where they see fit. But when you look at this year's draft, the Patriots tried to address many needs. And to me, the Patriots, I think, got three startable players from day one. They got Isaiah Wynn, guard slash tackle from Georgia. Played tackle in his last year and senior year in Georgia and was really excellent. Um, nothing really bad to say about this guy. He really stuck out to me when it came to the Senior Bowl. When I was watching the edge rushers in this year's draft, I kept wondering who the heck this Isaiah Wynn guy was because he was dominating each and every rep. And Isaiah Wynn was certainly a first round pick, in my opinion. He was certainly a guy that I thought um, maybe would rise up boards as the draft became closer because I just kept seeing this guy constantly dominate in his chances and constantly, you know, he was a player that played at Georgia, a really good team. They were almost the national champions this year. And you then add his running back, Sony Michelle, who I think is going to be a really nice player in this system. And that's the key. He can do it all. And to me, he's a guy with great burst out of the backfield, explosive speed down the field. He can break away from defenses. And the Patriots haven't had a running back like that in quite some time. They haven't had a guy that has that pure speed like Sony Michelle and can just break away. And to me, he's had comparisons of Alvin Kamara, but actually I think he kind of more aligns with a Deion Lewis, who the Patriots had last year. Um, I think he it can be better than Deion Lewis though as a runner. He does have great power when he runs. Like I said, better breakaway speed. Maybe not the same lateral quickness as a Deion Lewis, but also brings great ability in the catching game. And for a young player, really has great pass blocking skills. So Sony Michelle, I think he's going to make an immediate impact. I think he's immediately going to come in there and training camp, be the most talented running back and probably get the most reps of any running back on the Patriots roster this upcoming season. He's going to be a really good player. AJ Green already said that this guy could be the rookie of the year in that Patriots system. So Isaiah Wynn, probably going to start maybe at left tackle, but I would assume at left guard. I think they didn't really love what Joe Tooney brought to the table last year as the left guard. And they brought in Trent Brown with one of their third round picks from San Francisco, who was one of the best pass blocking tackles in, in the league last year. So I think with Trent Brown, you add him to this offensive line with Marcus Cannon coming back. Maybe Trent Brown can play left tackle. Marcus Cannon plays right tackle. Isaiah wins slots in the left guard. You have Andrews, who was really good at center last year. And you have Mason, who was arguably the Patriots' best offensive lineman last year. So the Patriots all of a sudden went from a spot on the offensive line where it was very weak to an offensive line that might be one of the best in the NFL with that Isaiah win pick and with the trade for Trent Brown. Sony Michelle will add to a running back core that was okay, but now looks very explosive and very dynamic. Then you go to Duke Dawson in the second round from Florida. Didn't know too much about him, but from what I've read and what I've heard and what I've seen, feisty slot corner was one of the best in this year's draft. Um, they get him uh, kind of in the middle of the second round and actually late in the second round, and a guy that was really good at Florida in the slot position. And when you look at the Patriots last year, that was a need. They had Malcolm Butler and uh, Stephon Gilmore on the outside. Gilmore was their best corner. Butler, you know, we've talked about him. He struggled at times last year. That's why they sort of got rid of him, and he wasn't really worth the money. Um, and of course, we know about the Super Bowl. But they really haven't had a great slot corner in quite some time. I would really say since Kyle Arrington. Um, Kyle Arrington was a really good slot corner at times. And, you know, since him, 
that they haven't really had that guy that can just shut down a slot receiver. And Duke Dawson maybe can do that. Um, he gave up one of the best passer ratings in the entire uh, draft this year in terms of corners um, in that position and really was impressive all year for, for Florida. And this is a guy that I think he has good speed. Um, he might even be a, a better player in the NFL with some coaching. And I think he's going to immediately make an impact for the Patriots, whether it's as, as a depth corner or maybe even as a starter. He'll challenge Jonathan Jones for that slot corner job, and I think it's going to be an interesting battle there. Um, Jawan Bentley in the fifth round with Christian Sam in the sixth round. The Patriots finally address their front seven here. Uh, so Bentley is a guy that the Patriots love. Um, they love be, love him because of his off the field. He's more of a downhill thumper. He's more of a think uh, uh, sort of a Brandon Spikes, although his coaches at Purdue did kind of say that he is more athletic than people think. But he's a four-time captain, I believe, and he's a guy that's gone through a lot of things in his life and bounced back, and he's just shown great um Great passion for the game, a very smart player. I wouldn't be surprised he's, if he's one of those defensive players early in his career that the Patriots test with the green dot on his helmet. And I wouldn't be surprised if he gets some reps early in training camp because I think the Patriots really love what he brought to the table in their interviews with him and all that sort of stuff. Then you have Christian Sam, Arizona State, who, although I didn't love the Bentley pick because... I really felt like on the field, Bentley isn't a guy that they really needed because I felt like Alan and Roberts is a similar player to Bentley. Now, maybe Bentley is better, um, but Alan and Roberts is kind of that downhill guy, not great in coverage. They needed more of a cover linebacker, and to me, that's what Christian Sam gives them. He's a guy with more athleticism, um, decent in coverage. Uh, he has a powerful f uh, frame and is a little aggressive at times, but I think he has the athleticism to go sideline to sideline, and he's more of that weak side backer in comparison to Bentley, who's more of the middle linebacker. Then Braxton Berrios, who you guys know how I love this pick. He could be, you know, the next Wes Welker, Danny Amendola. He walks, talks, and acts like Danny Amendola on the football field. Like, it's kind of crazy. He reminds me a little of Welker as well. Not so much of Edelman, but when you watch this guy's tape, nine touchdowns last year, he's kind of a late bloomer, um, and that's usually what these kind of sl short slot white guys are. Um, but he was really good last year, classic Patriots pick. He can add to the punt return game, maybe help Edelman in that regard, replace Danny Amendola in that regard, and then also uh, provide depth in the first couple of seasons. But I think he could be a long-term guy. Like, you know how Edelman took some time to come into form? Walker came into form. Amendola came into form in their years in the NFL. I think Braxton Berrios can be very much the same. Very good route runner, create separation for himself. Um, he just understands offenses and how to get open. And that's the type of receiver that the Patriots love. Then you go to Danny Etling, who's perhaps one of the most interesting picks of this draft for the New England Patriots. They get a quarterback, but it's finally in the seventh round. Uh, not in love with this pick. I don't even think he'll make the roster, but we'll see. I mean, he was from LSU. He protected the ball really well. Decent accuracy. We'll see what they get out of him. Ke uh, Keon Crossan and Ryan Izzo, two guys that I don't think will make the roster. Crossan more for his speed. He really showed off his speed when they um, went to his workout. And Izzo is more of a blocking tight end that could perhaps challenge a Dwayne Allen in training camp. But I don't expect those three last guys to make it. Braxton Berrios, I'm hoping, makes it and impresses and can add to that depth at receiver and hopefully future be a starter. Christian Salmon Bentley will probably for sure make the roster as interior inside linebackers just to add depth. And then you probably have in your first three picks three starters at three positions that fill needs. So the Patriots are reloading and looking good going in the 2018 season. I like what they did in this year's draft, and I'm giving the New England Patriots an A-. minus. I do feel like they could have added an edge rusher in this year's draft uh, to hopefully or maybe help their pass rush a little bit. But besides that, I think they addressed a lot of their positions of need. Got, got a huge playmaker on offense, got an offensive lineman, um, got a corner, and just added depth to their overall roster. So I think if you're a Patriots fan, you're happy walking away from this draft.